Okay, if A and B are not empty sets, we're trying to prove that A cross B is equal to B cross A if and only if A is equal to B. Um, so because we have a biconditional, we're going to do a two-part statement, um, two-part proof, where first we are assuming this and showing that it leads to that, and then we are assuming this and then showing that it leads to that, to this one. So let's do part one. Um, so part one, part one, assume, assume A cross B is equal to B cross A, right? Uh, so we're gonna say, let X belong to A and Y belong to B. And what we're trying to do here is show that A is equal to B. Um, and now, because we're dealing with equality, the way that we prove things are equal is showing a double inclusion. Um, so we want to show that A is a subset of B and B is a subset of A. So uh, let X belong to A and Y belong to B, then uh, X, Y belong to A cross B, right? That's the definition of A cross B. Uh, but A cross B is equal to B cross A, so uh, X, Y belong to B cross A. A. Now, if x, y belongs to b cross a, this implies that this implies that um, x is in b and y is in a because b cross a contains all the elements where uh, all the coordinate points will the, where the first element is in b and the second element is in a. So this implies that x belongs to b and y belongs to a. So we have that, that x belongs to A and x belongs to B, so A is a subset of B, right? Because we show that some element that was in A uh, must have been in B. Similarly, uh, Y belongs to B, so we began here and we, we ended there, right? So similarly, Y belongs to B, and y belongs to a, so b is a subset of a. So we have shown a double inclusion um, as a is a subset of b and b is a subset of a, so a is equal to b. And that is it for part one. Now we're going to do part two. So part two. Assume, assume A is equal to B. And now we want to show that A cross B is equal to B cross A. And similarly, we want to show a double inclusion, right? We want to show that A cross B is a subset of this and B cross A is a subset of that. Um, so assume that A is equal to B. And then we're going to say, let, let X, Y belong to A cross B. A cross B, right? Um, so if X, Y belongs to A cross B, what we're going to do here is say, um, from here we're going to say, then X belongs to A and Y belongs to B. But A is equal to B, so, so X belongs to B and Y belongs to A. Um, if x belongs to b and y belongs to a, this implies that, this implies that um, x, y belongs to b cross a, right? Because um, if, if x is in a and y is in b, it means that x is in b and y is in a, so the first element is in b, the second element is in a, so x, y belongs to b cross a. Thus, thus, um, A cross B is a subset of B cross A. Because what we've done here is we've shown that since X, Y belong to A cross B, and then it, X, Y belongs to B cross A. So it means that A cross B is contained in B cross A, right? And now we're going to do the other way around. We want to show that B cross A is a subset of A cross B. So we're going to say... Uh, Similarly, let 
uh, we can take different variables. Let m comma n belong to b cross a. Then m belongs to b and n belongs to a. As a is equal to b, we have that that m belongs to a and n belongs to b. So m comma n belongs to a cross b, right? By definition. Thus, let me zoom out. Thus, b cross a is a subset of a cross b. And our conclusion is, therefore, b cross a is equal to a cross b because we have this double inclusion. We have it here and we have it there. So um, we've shown the two-part proof, right? We've shown that if we assume this guy here, as we did in part one, we get there. And then in part two, if we assume this, we get there. So that is it for item 14.